Hello everybody, welcome back to Legend of Heroes Trails in Sky and we're going through, I think we're going through the last part of the tutorial in this episode where it will be combat and then you get a few extra items and after that I'm gonna make another video where I plan, where I sort of explain how I'm going to make this playthrough. Here we go. Monsters at 12 o'clock. Be careful not to let them take advantage of your blind side. Got it. Monsters cannot be seen from far away. They will become visible as you approach them. Conditions start with perfect battle will change depending on how a monster is engaged. Engaging an enemy from behind is advantageous or being attacked by an enemy from from behind is disadvantageous. So if like I attack its back when it has a back turned at me, but if I attack that point I will get an advantage. Okay, battle order bar. Indicates who attacks first. It starts from the top and moves down. So it's like a turn based uh, strategy kind of game, the combat. Where it's not like when it's your turn you control your whole team of characters. It's like it's this character's turn now to make a move. Either you can move or you can attack, but we'll, we'll get to that. Indicates who attacks first. It starts from the top and moves down. So you can see it's a still's turn first. Where we are just going to attack. Attack. Attack an enemy. You may also use it to move. If you are using a mouse and click. A mouse and click an empty location. The highlighted area indicates the distance a character can move. Selecting a target in this area will move the character to attack. When an enemy is out of range, an sign icon will appear on your cursor. Selecting an out of range target will move the character as close to it as possible, but no attack will be performed. Okay, so like you can see here, I can attack this one that's nearby, but I can't attack the one that's way in the back because. I'm a, I'm playing. I'm doing a stills turn right now. She can only move as far as the blue blocks indicates, and then the circle, uh, the kind of orange circle around her, is like how far she can attack. She has a longer range of attack than Joshua has because she is using a staff rather than uh, two dirks or knives. Let's, let's go ahead and attack this dirty rat. <laughs> there, alright. That's good. Now, I kinda want to show how the move thing works. So, like, you can see here, we have the move. You can move, you can click anywhere, but it will only, like it said before, it will move you as close to the point you want as possible. Meaning it will it will move if I want to move over here, then it will only move here. Because that's as far as Joshua can go right now. You can get boots boots with uh, more movement or something like that. Uh, you can also go back in the distance if you want to be like a spellcaster or ranged attacker that is not supposed to be harmed or anything. But I'm gonna go back and attack this. And it dropped the chest. It looks like the other dirty red won't even move. So we're just gonna go ahead and go as close to it as possible. Still two. This is very tutorial. Like the <laughs> enemy won't even attack me. Yes, they, they're just standing still. <laughs> Alright. That's the first combat. Alright, we're good to and go. As you saw, the, both of the mobs, act, both of the dirty rats actually dropped, dropped a chest, which means that they dropped an item. 
over the four small crystals they just drop, which are Sepith. We'll get there now. You can see the two rats dropped. Uh, they must have dropped two Earth Sepith, one Fire Sepith, and one Space Sepith each. So it adds up to what I've received right there. And then the items they dropped was monster bones, one each. Right, let's move on. I didn't lose any HP or anything because the monsters did not attack me. Okay, here yeah, we have a little more difficult enemy. Here comes some more. Depending on the enemy, some physical attacks may be ineffective. Let's use arts, not physical attacks. Okay. Arts are effective on enemies that are good at avoiding physical attacks. Arts also make long-range attacks possible, but they require time to be cast. EP is consumed when arts are used. EP can be recovered by resting at inns, hotels, or by using charge stations and other items like an EP charge. Like the charge station over at the start of uh, the sewers, which I showed you in the last episode, the end of the last episode. Alright, arts. Arts are effective against foes which are difficult to hit with a weapon or those on which physical attacks have little effect. It takes time before arts can be cast. Also, EP is con consumed when arts are cast. I'd, I'd like to just... Yeah, well, EP is fine, but it's blue, it's, it's mana. Come on. Also, EP is consumed when arts are cast. Alright, so these enemies, they are hard to hit, so we're gonna use arts, and uh, we're gonna use this water art that it still has, a single attack water art, called Aqua Bleed, and Joshua, he has, also has a support ability which, which speeds up allies, but we're also gonna use the single target spell that he has for enemies. Take! Then he goes first. Oh! Uh. Alright. Piece of cake! So only one of the two monsters actually dropped an item, but they both they both always they always dropped Sepith. Each monster drops a set amount of Sepith. Different from what kind of monster it is, of course, but they all drop Sepith. But I only got items, an item from one of the two flies, moths, or whatever they were called. Got a crisp onion, which can be used for cooking in some recipes. Alright. Moving on. Okay, here we get like an advantage because it has its back turned to us. So let's try using crafts this time around. Since crafts have other effects besides just dealing out damage, they're worth a shot. Roger that. Crafts have range limits but can be utilized instantly. CP is gained by dealing out or receiving damage during battle. Alright, they both have 20 CP, which is the lowest bar that they have. Alright, crafts. Crafts are character specific skills which not only deal out damage but also have a broad range of effects. Using crafts consumes CP. CP is gradually gained by dealing out or receiving damage in battle. Alright, so let's try and use crafts. Still has this. Moral Shout Craft, which gives 20% more strength to all allies in the blue circle that is shown right now. You can't target this craft because it comes from Estelle herself. So, yeah, but y you'll see how it works now. Come on! Yeah, so now. Joshua and still both have got gotten increased strength right now. 
Alright, and then we're gonna use Joshua's craft, which is a double attack or something like that. We're gonna use it on this rat. Oh, wait a second. It actually didn't give me the advantage, even though the rat had its back turned at the beginning. That's weird. Because the game actually teaches you that you have this advantage right at the first battle. But alright. It's tutorial. I don't yeah. <laughs> Go ahead and kill this one. Alright, we're good to go. Alright, got another monster bone. Let's see what's this way. There are bound to be chests all over the place, so I'm gonna do a lot of exploring in these kind of maps or dungeons, something like that. Uh, I've got a reviving bomb, which is used for whenever either Distill or Joshua or any other characters gets KO'd or dies, kind of. They, they kneel down when they lose all their HP, so I can use that reviving bomb to have them fight again. Oh, what a surprise! Another creepy thing. I wish there were an easy way to take care of them. One blow using an S-craft or S-break should do the trick for just about any enemy. Catch is, our CP has to be at least 100 to pull off one of these moves. These devastating attacks can only be unleashed when the CP dodge is above 100. S breaks are actions which allow S craft to be immediately unleashed while ignoring the battle order. S crafts which are unleashed as S breaks can be changed by going to the to tactics and then set S break within the main menu. Alright. So. Estelle and Joshua both have 98 CP right now, so if they attack once, they should gain their over 100. Yes, so then it went up to over 100. Okay, S breaks. These are actions which allow S crafts to be immediately unleashed while ignoring the battle order once the CP gauge has reached zero. Alright. S crafts will, which will be used as S breaks, can be changed by going to tactics and then set S break within the main menu. All right, press the button right there, the red big red button, break button to unleash an S break. An S break cannot be unleashed under the uh, not press condition. <laughs> now press the. Press the red button, break button, and try unleashing an S break. If you are using a keyboard, or you you may use the one to four number keys or the arrow keys to select it before unleashing it. We're not using a keyboard; we're using a controller for this game. So, yeah, here we are. Using the button. So, still is using her S break right now. Here I come! Some of these S crafts or S breaks are really amazing. Which will come in later in the game. They they are really awesome. Alright. Yeah. And I'm not gonna use it like this this time. I'm going to show you how, because when you click the button, they say it's an S-break. Because you like break the chain of um, the, the order that which you, you make your character come in line up where it's Joshua's turn right now. But um, I can also release the S-crafts, which they're originally called, right just from the crafts menu. And uh, Joshua's one is called Sever. A fainting assassin's attack. Single. Let's do this! <laughs> 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 
Usually you just All right. keep We're good to go. the aircraft so you can use them as brakes if you want to take over a different... Uh, if you want to attack before the enemy or something like that. So that you can take over their turn. Yeah. Well, moving on. And two monster horns. And two monster horns. Alright, there's nothing that way. I'm gonna check this way too. There's nothing. Alright, here's another rat. So that's the treasure chest we're after, huh? How could it just have been the other one? Well, if we've made it this far, the rest got a piece of cake. Seems like we've got a little breathing room at least. Let's pay close attention to our battle order this time. There should be a number of ways to get more mileage out of our actions. During battle, there are several bonuses which can be allotted to turns. Turn bonuses have the same effect regardless of whether they are allotted to an ally or a foe. Using S breaks to ignore the battle order makes it easy to jump in and strip an enemy of their turn bonus. Alright. Battle order bonus. These icons indicate the bonuses allotted to the battle order. If a bonus icon appears next to a character's icon, they will receive that bonus. Heal HP, that means heal HP, that one that Estelle has, she will heal 10% of her maximum health from that. Alright, and Sepith up ETC, indicate the effects of each icon. The Sepith up, the one that the fly or muff has in turn 4, it means that whenever this character attacks something, it steals Sepith from uh, the one it attacks. So like, uh, if I have an, uh, an area of effect attack that I want to use on all of the enemies, and I have that bonus that particular turn, it means I can steal from every enemy that I hit. So that's a very good way to earn a lot of, of Sepith, is to use those bonuses. Alright, so Estelle healed 13 that turn. She healed for 10% of her maximum. Alright, we're gonna use Aqua Bleed on this guy. And Joshua, you're gonna use Soul Blur on this guy. And then it's gonna be the enemy's turn. Sometimes art can be just as good as, as a normal attack. You can see there's this element. You can see the, th the status of the Dirty Red. They, they have 80 HP, their condition, none, and then they have this elemental efficacy uh, percentage where you can see um, their weaknesses and uh, Strength, something like that. If it has, the, it has a hundred percent in everything right now. That means that every kind of art that has this elemental value will go through and damage the regular damage. Uh, but if it was like a hundred and twenty percent, then let's say the water had uh, one hundred and twenty percent, then it stills. Uh, art, aqua bleed, it would uh, deal 20% more damage. And like if, and so like if it had 80%, it would deal 20% less damage. All right, let's go ahead and attack the sturdy red. I think. Yes, we have the sepith up bonus this turn, so let's go ahead and attack. <laughs> we stole one sepith from it. It's not very effective right now, but. Uh, Later in the game, it gets very good. Right. 
gonna kill him so he doesn't do any more damage. Alright. And we're gonna dual strike this one. And then there's that little rascal down there at the end that don't move. I'm just gonna use an art on him, and then it'll be over. Some arts also have lower cast time than others, like this tear, teal. So it has a shorter cast time than other arts. For what reason, I do not know, but I guess that's fair and all. Elemental efficacy of the moths. All right. Well, it's dead now. Whatever. That's that then. Let's move out. They good do give an amazingly amount of XP though. After some time, when you level up, they only give. A small amount. You kill like thousands, thousands of them. All right. Let's see this chest. Found small box times two. Hmm. That's weird. There's a couple of boxes inside the treasure chest. The fact that there's not just one but two is kind of interesting. Two. Wonder what's inside. Remember, Estelle, our mission is to search and retrieve only. I'm pretty sure looking inside those boxes doesn't fall under our mission objective. You're no fun at all, Joshua. This has nothing to do with our mission. It's what I like to call good, honest curiosity. You know, we're the only ones down here. We can get away with it. Teensy weensy peak, right? If you feel like flunking today's test, then by all means be my guest. They just say the F word. Yep, opening one of those boxes could result in an automatic fail for the purpose. If this were a real job, the contents of those boxes would belong to the client. And as long as they were nothing illegal, we would have no right to open them. I know you're right, Joshua, but I just can't help myself. If you absolutely have to know what's inside, why not ask Miss Shara when we get back? Now we need to focus on getting out of here. Alright, alright. Guess we don't get an option. Just have to get the hell out of here. Let's just restore all of our DP HP. Well, we're at it. And that go up and I think it's, this is the end of the tutorial. But we'll see. There might be something about cooking, but I think that's just getting a book or something. Alright, good work you two. As a rule of training, I'm going to need to confirm the items in your possession. Hand it over a small box times two. Yep, they're the real deal, alright. I don't see any evidence of tampering either. That was a close one. I figured she would try and set, up, set us up like that. Congratulations to the both of you. You've successfully passed your qualification test. You didn't really think something that simple would be a problem for us, did you? So, uh, Shara, what's in those boxes you had us get? That's for me to know and for you to find out. After your training is fi finished, that is. <coughs> That's enough chit-chat for now. Let's get back to work. You two still have some things left to do. Seriously? But didn't you just say that we passed the test? You still have to learn about how to report the results of your work. You're aware that you're both tired, but this is no time to shirk your duties. Let's get back to the kitchen. When is this day going to be over? Oh well, there's no sense in giving up when the finish line is in sight. Agreed. It seems like we're within reaching distance of our goal. 
final training is how to report to the guild. Whenever you finish a job, it is your duty to report the results of your work to the guild. Reporting how you resolved the situation and the steps you took to get there are all part of your job as a razor. You can report your results to the front desk in each guild branch and as you already know by now, Aina is in charge here at the Roland branch. In addition, this is where you will be paid for your work. I look forward to seeing great things from the both of you. Now that we're here, why don't you both go ahead and report the results of today's training? Upon approaching the counter, a talk mark will appear. Pressing the OK button will display a list of options. Select Report to report to the guild. Alright. Received payment for training retrieval. Payment in mirror 500. And gained BP 1. And then also gained one in the jobs completed. Alright. <coughs> Current rank is Junior Bracer 9th class. Which is the lowest class at the moment. Good job, you two. It seems like you were able to complete your objective without running into any major problems. Another thing to take note of is that depending on how you handle a job, you may see an increase or decrease in the amount of pay you receive. When you report the results of your work to the guild, pay in the form of a mirror isn't the only thing you will receive. You also accumulate points which are known as BP, Bracer Points. BP are an indication of your achievements as a Bracer. When these points exceed a certain value, you will advance in rank as a bracer and be awarded with a piece of special equipment by the guild. The ranks of a junior bracer start at 9 and go all the way up to 1. Please set your sights on making first rank and work hard. The amount of mirror and BP you receive will also be recorded in your bracer notebooks. So please have a look sometime later on. All that's left to do now is finalize your training. Let's sit back upstairs, shall we? I'll talk to you later, Aina. And sorry about putting more work on your plate today than usual. Don't worry about it. Training new braces is important for the future of the game. I fully intend to work these two to the bone in any case. To the bone? And knowing Shara, it'll involve the whip. <laughs> True. <laughs> Let me say it again. Good work, you two. You have now officially completed the entire training course. From now on, you'll be learning from your own real-world experience. Well then, Sherazard holds out two small boxes. Aren't those boxes the ones? In answer to your question, yes, these are the boxes you retrieved during today's test. You seem awfully curious to find out what's inside us though. Are you saying that it's okay if we open them? That's right. Why don't the both of you have a look and see what's inside? Sweet! Alright, let's have a look. Stella and Joshua opens the, open the boxes. Inside, receive Junior Bracer Emblem. This crest is... So does this mean that we are... <coughs> it's still bright. Joshua Bright. Beginning this day at 1500 hours, you are both hereby appointed as junior bracers within the Bracer Guild. From here on, you will work as members of the Bracer Guild to support the livelihood of those around you, defend peace and uphold justice. Congratulations, you two, and welcome into the fold. <laughs> Singing. <laughs> Alright. Did you hear that, Joshua? We become members of the Bracer Guild. So I'm a bracer now, huh? I think the realization is only now it's just beginning to sink in. Come on, Joshua, you should be jumping for joy or running around and screaming at the top of your lungs like this. Look at us now, Will! We did it! I was happy until you made my eardrums bleed. I hate to interrupt the celebrations. Still, but I need to take off now. I have some backed up work that needs my immediate attention. We understand. I have been spending a lot of extra hours working with us during this busy time for the guild. We 
before you head out, Shara, I just wanted to say thanks. Likewise, I appreciate all the trouble you've gone through for us, Shara. Don't mention it, training new recruits is one of the race's many duties. Believe it or not, I was once in your shoes a long time ago when your father, Cassius, trained me. So that's why you have so much respect for my dad, huh? There's actually much more to it than that, but I'll save that conversation for another day. As for the both of you, work hard to become full-fledged braces early on so you can help guide those new recruits who come after yourselves. And in time, I hope to see you both become respectable braces like your father. Anyway, I'll leave you with that thought. Just taking off, and we're now braces! Um, I just don't get it. Get what? This is Sherazad, aka the Silver Streak, one of the most skilled young braces we're talking about. Yeah, she's like only five years older than Estella and Joshua or something. And they're like 16, I think. So why is it that she holds that in such high esteem? It just seems like nothing more than a no-good middle-aged man who is always out doing who knows what instead of being a father. A no-good middle-aged man, you say. Huh? From your viewpoint, it doesn't come as a surprise that you would see him in that fashion. Huh? Never mind. Let's hurry and head home. We should let Dad know that we qualified as Junior Braces. Right. Alright, so we're going home now. But that should be the end of the tutorial. So, oh, alright, oh there's a small... Uh, quest. Here before we head home. Hurry up and come, says Luke. Pat. Wait for me, Luke. Huh? Oh, it's you two. Oh, great. It's still. Hi there, Joshua. Okay, you little twerp. What's with the... Oh, great. It's a still remark. And what's the big hurry? How about telling us where you're headed? You're not thinking about wandering out of town alone, are you? The roads are full of monsters, and I hope you know. I hope you know. You're such a pest, Estelle. Don't you know there's no room for girls to be sticking their big fat noses in boys' business? Quit acting like you're a brazen you wanna be. Mm -hmm. Now wrong you are, Luke. How incredibly wrong. You're more wrong than a fool who thinks there's better tasting milk in Liberal than the milk that comes from the Purcell farm. Alright. <laughs> what? No way! You're full of it, Estelle. In fact, as of just a few minutes ago, we qualified to become real bracers. Are you hearing what I'm saying? Real bracers! More like braces in training, really. Don't think you should get getting on your high horse just yet, Estelle. Now a high pony, on the other hand. Quit being a killjoy. Whoa, you two are great. I'm so happy for the both of you. Thanks, Pat. Oh, Pat, you're such a good little boy. Unlike that smart aleck and cynical brat you call a friend. This isn't fair. I was supposed to become a brazer first. I can accept that Joshua became a brazer before me, but getting passed by the likes of Estelle? What's the likes of Estelle supposed to mean? Just so you know, you can't even be a brazer until you're 16 years old. Get it? Only mature people allowed. Yeah. Mature. Sure. Still. It's very mature where the way you're coming from. And that means no little kids who are still going to Sunday school. She's just a bully. I don't know how I should put this still, but Sunday school is dying to have you back. <laughs> it better watch out, still. I'm going to go train at my secret base, and before you know it, I'm gonna be a brazer too. Come on, Pat, let's go. Alright, I'm coming. See you later, still. Bye, Joshua. 
That boy, Luke, he's always trying to pick a fight with me. I wonder if he just plain hates me or something. Rather, I think it's the exact opposite. What do you mean by that? Don't worry about it, it's just a boy thing. At any rate, what do you think Luke meant when he said secret base? I don't know why, but somehow it makes me a bit curious. I know exactly what you mean, a secret base sounds really intriguing. The pure heart of a young child can be so inspiring at times. That's not really what I meant by curious. Yeah, I think I know what he means. He means like this their secret base is not in the city, it's like out of town or something. Alright. But we're gonna explore a bit here. Actually, we're just gonna go in here and buy a thing that I'm gonna use for some of my other videos. Oh, we're also gonna have to say hello and we just got to be braces and all that kind of stuff to people. Hello there, Estelle, Estelle and Joshua. What are you in the market for today? A new pair of shoes? Renan. Hello, Renan. Now that you mention it, are there any new ones in stock? You know, like the new Stragas? Unbelievable. You've actually already forgotten why we came in here to begin with. We're not here to shop. We're supposed to be buying a copy of the libel news for dad, right? Uh, uh, <laughs> You've always been a big collector of those shoes, haven't you, Esther? I'm afraid that the new Stragas aren't out yet. I do, however, have some sh copies of the libel news in, 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 if that's what you're after. Alright, I'll take one copy then. It comes to 100 mirror, please. Alright, I know my dad always buys a copy of this magazine, but does it really sell that well? It sure does. The Libel News has an excellent reporter and cameraman who have done a great job reporting the latest and most reliable news. They're even supposed to have a running story related to Queen Alicia's birthday celebration. But enough about that. Why don't you tell me how you did today? Did you make it as praises? Today was your last day of training, wasn't it? Yep. Every everything went smoothly too. But how did you know about all that, Mr. Serena? <laughs> in a certain sense, both you and Joshua are like celebrities here in Roland. I tend to hear a lot from customers coming through here. Like, from who? Sherazad? They, they practically just came out of the building. I shouldn't have expected anything less from Roland. The grape wine around here is, is seriously something to be reckoned with. Yeah, it, it went really fast. No kidding, the women here especially love to gossip. One more thing before you go, this gift is my way of saying congratulations. It's a free sample item I received with my shipment of goods, but don't hold the free part against me. Oh, a recipe book. So that's where we get that. What's this supposed to be for? There's a ton of blank pages. It's a recipe book, isn't it? You got it. When you get hurt fighting, you should just limit yourself to healing bombs all the time, like the ones we got from at the start of the sewer from Shirazad. It's going to cut pretty deep into your wallets. This is where a recipe book comes into play. If you eat food to recover your strength instead, it's basically free. Yeah, with all the items you get from monsters, you can make food. It's pretty awesome. Assuming you have all the ingredients anyway, so if you eat something new, write down what's in it and you'll have lots of recipes in no time. So how about we try this out? Go ahead and eat this cookie, Estelle. <laughs> well, I have made it a personal route to never turn down sweets. Boy. If, ah, uh, she would, no, 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 I'm not, just, not gonna say that. She would be an easy target. Oh, no, that's wrong. Well, I have made it a personal room to never turn down sweet. Alright, let's move on. Eight maple cookie. Learned maple cookie recipe. Basically, all you have to do is eat the food to learn the recipe. It's as simple as that. As you're traveling about, you should eat whatever food you come across. Did you
you haven't had an opportunity to try before. Well, that sounds pretty convenient. It's not that I don't like cooking at all, and all, it's just that I never seem to get any better. I'd sure love to be able to increase my repertoire and really shock my dad's taste buds for once in my life. That's the spirit. In passing, if you're in need of any ingredients, I'd be delighted to service your cooking needs. Where'd you go, merchant? You're saying, come in here and buy shit off me. Service your cooking needs. You really know how to solicit... Solicit? Your customers, Mr. Redan. Exactly. Thank you for the recipe book. We'll put it to good use. Eating the recommended dish at restaurants or using to-go meals adds the recipe to the recipe book. By selecting the recipe book, all learned recipes will be, dis will be displayed. As long as the necessary ingredients are available, the food can be made. There are two types of food. Sit-down meals, which must be eaten on the spot, and to-go meals, which can be carried as items. Sit-down meals cannot be carried as items. Ingredients used for cooking can be bought at a store or acquired from monsters. Alright. So then we got the recipe book. And we also got... Let's look here in the items. We also got this recipe book. We got a lot of books now. And also some ingredients from the monsters down in the sewers. Alright, I think I'm going to leave this episode here, and then uh, I'm going to make uh, this next episode an episode where I explain uh, a lot of stuff, like the menus here, what what is shown here in the menus, and um, how are we going to proceed with this playthrough, like when you proceed, you can like get in here and look at the bulletin board and there will be a lot of quests or jobs to make. I will try to make them all but I, I'm i not sure I will put them in uh, in a video. I think I will like keep a series running for like the main part of the game and then I will do a side story part where I put in all the jobs that are uh, acquired from the on the bullets and board. Yeah. That's that's probably what I'm gonna do. But I'm gonna I'm gonna explain into further detail in uh, my next video. So yeah there will also be another series other than that but in the next video I will explain it. So I'm gonna go ahead and save right here and then Thank you all for watching and uh, see you around. Bye.